Hey, this is Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and welcome to part one of my bone shaker build. Um, I know I said I'd probably never do another bone shaker, but here I am. Um, uh, this is a Rogue Syndicate Parts slash Blue Mini TSI Customs slash Hot Wheels slash whatever type build. It's, uh, mainly Rogue Syndicate Parts, but I've got a few from the other ones. And I've got a couple bone shakers kicking around. And I'm going to pretty much cut the crap out of it, and there really won't be much left of the original Bone Shaker. There's some wheels from Rogue Syndicate that I plan on using, and a roll cage that's from Blue Mini TSI Customs. As always, if you like the content, make sure you subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get notified of all videos. So, I have a love-hate relationship with the Bone Shaker and trying to, I, I, there's so many possibilities that I always end up going back to them for some reason. So, I get two different styles here. I wanted the base off of one of them, but since I already had one that was kind of stripped in my junk pile, I'm going to kind of mix match the two together. And as usual, I hinge 90% of my projects off the wheels. Um, it's probably back ass words for what you should do, but that's kind of how I work and the way I do things. These are pretty slick. Uh, rubber wheels, deep dish. I think they're 12 spoke. I'm not sure, but they're really slick wheels. And I, I like the gold. I'm not painting them. I like them just the way they are. So... That's kind of what I'm going to do is base everything off the wheels, or at least my inspiration uh, for the project itself. The roll cage is still at this point, uh, even though I'm almost, I wouldn't say I'm almost done, but I got enough content to actually do a part two, which I'm going to film or edit as soon as I'm done doing the voiceover on this one. Um, this has been a long time coming. This has been this project, I started it, phew, I don't know three months ago and then I just got sidetracked so you'll see like my mat changes and some stupid background stuff changes because it's been so long since I started it um, and you're looking at the oldest right now so to use these wheels what I'm going to do is I've got a whole box of all the wheels I take off I keep mainly because I want the axles and they're a pain in the neck to keep track of so I just keep them on the wheels and when I need them I cut them so that's what I was, I just took a set of wheels, I took the axle out, and then I cut it in half, and then I've got myself an axle. Obviously, you have to use an axle tube, uh, but it uh, works out perfectly. So, no matter what, I'm cutting the nose off. Uh, I don't like the nose of the bone shaker to begin with. The problem with this is when you cut the nose off, you pretty much lose the firewall. No, you don't pretty much. You actually lose the firewall. Uh, it's part kind of incorporated into the, the interior, which has the engine, the interior, the gas tank, and all that crap all attached as one. And you don't really see it because the engine hides that area anyways. So that's one of the struggles that I'm going to find. And you'll see this video is probably a little bit more um, in-depth and I'm not trying to skip like I usually do. I skip around a lot and skip steps or kind of half-ass show you the steps. I don't want to do that this time. I want to show you a little bit more than I normally do, hence why there's going to be multiple parts. Um, it'll probably be three, whereas the third one um, will probably be just more painting and assembly. But you'll get the gist of it by the end of the next one, which will be out in another day or so. So I'm using the... Um, jeweler's saw I try to use that for you know if you watch any of my videos I pretty much use a, a cut off disc for just about everything but I want to be a little bit more precise so I'm going to use a jeweler's saw so I have less less grinding and cutting and it's less messy it just takes longer so but because I, I wasn't sure if I was going to have to use these pieces at some point, I wanted a nice clean cut so that if I did need to use them, I had them available. So pretty much all I'm left with is a cab. And when you cut those two pieces off, you lose all semblance of a way to actually connect it to the chassis. So, um, so here, in order to get this roll cage to work, I have to, to notch the 
tab itself so that it'll sit all the way down and what I've done is I kind of set it in there I marked it off and made two uh, u-notches on the top and that's kind of what I'm trying to do there you can see see right there what that does it allows the angle part of the you can see right there how it sits down nice and flush now so that's kind of what I was after by doing that so <laughs> The reason, another reason why this project has turned into a project is there's a lot of pieces and I had to I'm pretty much hand making a frame. So I start with some styrene, square tubing, just little bits and pieces. I've got just about everything kicking around. I may not have a lot of everything, but I find I buy the um, Evergreen, it's a miscellaneous pack and it's got a little bit of everything in it. I buy that and then, I mean, I've had that for almost a year now and I'm still playing around with little pieces out of it here and there so it works out good so here's why I wanted the original chassis is I want to kind of get a rough idea of what I need to do to make what I need the problem is is the shape is a little bit different from what I end up with but again you got to start somewhere and I don't have a clear, defined, this is exactly what I'm going to do. And I don't do this all the time, so it's not like I make a ton of chassis. Um, I think that last one I did was the Nightmare 62 Chevy pickup that I did. So I'm kind of doing the same thing where I need some frame rails. And I need, obviously there's no floor, so I need a floor for the cab. I need a way to secure the cab to sit over the floor but yet not be on the ground itself so you can kind of see here I'm just kind of mocking things up I don't know why it's a little blurry but so here I'm just kind of centering things and making it look as good as I can and you can see the rogue syndicate back half that I have and that's been glued parallel or perpendicular with the actual frame rails with the floor on it right now I still have the 1 16th square tubing going all the way to the front I don't have them cut off because I'm not sure how long I need it yet with the motor and with everything else and what you just saw there was um, another thing out of my scrap pile I believe it was a 32 uh, 32 Ford I want the grill shell and the uh, radiator out of it so so here you can see it's an articulating um, four link suspension that's really nice it's got the four link plus it's got the um, the rear end housing and that's pretty much just an empty you could stick something all the way through there like an axle so in order to mount the back half and made it with the four link the an axle for my hot wheels actually works perfectly you just need um, maybe maybe an eighth inch maybe maybe a quarter it doesn't really matter you can't see it once it's cut and that pins it in the four locations and it'll keep it nice and steady for you so at this point it's now I'm gonna start because I don't need it for the back but for the front I'm gonna need an axle tube in the back it'll actually stick into the rear end housing but the front it's pretty much back to the old-fashioned axle tubes which I cut a piece of 1 16th brass tubing then at that point I clean out the ends and I try to fit make sure everything's going to fit perfectly the big thing is making sure your axles aren't too long where you push one in it pushes the other out so obviously you got to do a little bit of a little bit of fitting before you actually glue anything in um, just to be safe because I've done it in the past and I skipped that step and thought I had it right and I didn't so um, just make sure that the axles don't touch when you put them in there and one one side doesn't push the other out because uh, you'll kind of kick yourself in the end so you can kind of see what I'm doing there I'm just kind of mocking up which is a lot of what this project is is mock-up and I end up actually changing the front end on this so I got a motor from Rogue Syndicate as well which comes with a motor and then a separate transmission and that's kind of what I'm doing right now is I'm gluing those two pieces together and it's hard to tell because everything's black right now but you can see I'm putting the, the transmission on there which means I have to notch out the um, floor to get that motor to sit where I need it to sit 
So I actually have to make a transmission tunnel and notch out and notch the firewall when I make that. So there's a lot of little pieces that go into making this <clears throat> that turns into uh, quite a nightmare and why it's taken me so long to find the time to do this. Because uh, i got to have the patience too. And I also got um, some shorty headers that just, they're like gasser style and just dump straight down. So that also came from Rogue Syndicate. So I'm going to kind of glue those on there. You can see I'm making a mess, but that's normal. I'm going to end up painting it all anyway, so you're not going to tell. So, you know, all these little things have to come into play and with the with the headers and where they dump out. i got to make sure the frame rail is thin enough so that it actually looks like it's supposed to. So there's, there's a little bit more. There's always a little bit involved that's kind of a you got to do one step at a time and you make one thing and you got to kind of think about three other things at the same time. So it's kind of a, a long process to, uh, to figure out. And in the end, you know, it's just a matter of here. You can kind of see I'm playing around with the firewall. I'm not overly concerned about with, you know, if it's perfect, perfect. Cause I'm going to end up, filing it down and making it smooth and that's the other great part about styrene is just, there's a lot you can work with so once you once you glue it on there if one piece is a little bit longer or it's not made it up exactly you can sand it you can file it you can do whatever you want and not have to be as precise i mean there's things obviously you have to be but there's a lot you don't have to be and i'm not a precise person so it works out really well for me so here you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of putting the, the top piece that goes up because I had to cut that part out. And then it'll all, I'll put a piece of glue across it and then I'll sand it down and it'll be perfect. Well, as perfect as it can be anyways for, for a bone shaker and for the type of build that I'm trying to go with. And I'm not sure at this point whether I'm going to go with a with paint. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it primer. I'm not sure if I'm going to go with a rusty look. Um, I'm not 100% sure. If you guys have an idea, I haven't done it yet. So make sure you let me know in the comments down below what you think. I'll definitely be doing a part two, but I'll be working on part three and finishing it now. So uh, any input off of this one would be uh, would be cool. Uh, you can see right there on the chassis how I cut out the transmission tunnel for the floor. And I did make a piece to go over that. I made it out of um, brown tubing, and I just kind of sliced it and made it look the best I could. It actually looks pretty good, and it wor actually works really well. So here you can see what I'm doing when I'm filing. This is what I was talking about. You can just, you know, blend it into the body lines the best you can. And, uh, yeah, it actually worked pretty good. When you get... Uh, Part two, I get some pictures and stuff of where I'm actually at now. So that'll be that'll be helpful for you to kind of see where I'm going with this. And if you follow me on Facebook um, or on the um, Facebook group, actually, I don't know if I posted this. Actually, I might not have. I know I posted it somewhere. But anyways, um, you can see how I changed to brass tubing, square tubing for the front chassis. But that's pretty much where I'm at. Stay tuned for part two. It'll be coming in a day or so.